babies are adorable bundles of innocent joy, right? Wrong! Not in video games, where according to our research, babies are horrifying bundles of abject terror. And who's to say whether these games are preying deftly on the player's fears around birth and parenthood, or if they reveal such fears lurking in the subconscious of the developers themselves? With this much horror to go around, it could definitely be both. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, steady your nerves and your parenting instincts, such as they are, for the seven scariest babies that prove parenting is the real nightmare. Oh, and the following video contains spoilers for the games currently scrolling on by, so watch out, spoiler fearers. You have been warned. As I understand it, one of the main hazards when handling a baby is that it might suddenly explode from either end, giving you a sort of fun spin of the clothes ruining roulette wheel every time you pick them up. Crawlers from Spacey's survival horror sequel Dead Space 2 take this idea and run with it, rather than, as would be sensible, running away from it. We first encounter the crawler in the daycare center of the Sprawl, the huge space station on which the game is set. At first, a crawler may appear to be a regular human baby. On closer inspection, however, it becomes clear that something is not quite right. For a start, their head is on backwards, which, if I know anything about babies, it's that that is usually considered a bad sign. Then there's the clue that their legs are fused together, and lastly, that their body is a giant explosive sack that detonates like a messy organic frag grenade should anyone get too close to it. Probably the biggest red flag, that one. If, for some reason, this doesn't put you off babies, space travel, and continuing to play Dead Space 2, you'll come across crawlers fairly regularly as you make your way through the rest of the game. And not only do they emit a horrible, keening wail whenever you get close, they're also quick, small, and get at you through unexpected gaps, making them an unpredictable menace. They don't have much health, but when they attack in a group, they can easily overwhelm you, at which point you're in for a much worse time than just having to put your spacesuit in the wash. It's not all bad news, though. If you like, you can use a cutting tool to decapitate the babies, and then use telekinesis to hurl their headless corpses at your other enemies, killing them with the resulting baby explosion. Weird. Saying that out loud makes it sound like a bad thing. No one take that out of context. with a newborn baby typically tends to worry about things like is it gaining enough weight or is its poop really meant to be that colour? I mean, really. In the case of new dad Ethan Winters, beleaguered protagonist of Resident Evil Village though, you can add the entirely new parental worry of my baby has been crystallised and split into four pieces, am I going to be able to reunite the crystal baby pieces and turn my baby back into a baby? Which is, needless to say, not covered in parenting manuals. That flask seems to contain her head. From that baseline of baby-related anxiety, Resident Evil Village ups the ante on itself with the horrific giant baby monster in the basement of the Beneviento estate, which is, spoiler alert, a horrific giant baby monster. <laughs> It's hard to say whether the creature is so deeply disturbing because it's dragging around a long bloody umbilical cord, or because it resembles less a healthy newborn infant and more an angry distorted ultrasound scan, or because of those upsettingly expressive baby sounds which are finely calibrated to confuse and terrify the mammalian bit of your brain that responds to crying babies. What we can say for sure is that this big bag of nope is the worst thing in the entire hallucination basement that is populated by old dolls, creepy mannequins, and a deep dark well straight out of the ring. By the time Ethan escapes basement baby and collects his own baby's dismembered crystal baby legs, you know he longs for the time when the only thing he had to worry about was what's the right colour for baby poop. Yellow, green or brown, apparently. Or black! I didn't ask. What do I want? 
Well, for the two of you to die, that would be nice. Then I could relax. When did you stop believing in God? God lives. Just look around you. I'd imagine that dealing with teen pregnancy is stressful enough without discovering that the baby in question is a terrifying god monster who will bring about the end of life as we know it. That's exactly the problem confronting 17-year-old Heather Mason from Silent Hill 3, as she discovers that, owing to some bizarre Silent Hill nonsense, she is carrying the god baby worshipped by bizarre cult The Order and its high priestess Claudia, who seems nice. You're pathetic. The game sees Heather battling all sorts of otherworldly monsters as she becomes more and more unwell from this unnatural occult pregnancy. Imagine dealing with all that, plus morning sickness. This entirely unpleasant experience comes to a head at the very end of the game, when the god fetus is scheduled to be born in a chapel that, we'll be completely honest, does not seem like a suitably sanitary place for childbirth. Oh, waiting God. so long for this. At least run a wet wipe around the place. You actually have two options at this point. Because the god baby apparently feeds off hatred, if you attack Claudia, you'll end up triggering the birth of this evil infant deity. Though the game mercifully cuts away to a game over screen before we have to watch Heather go through that particular ordeal. Oh, God! Bring us salvation! What you're supposed to do is crack open your pendant and eat the magic herbs inside, which for some reason causes Heather to puke up the god fetus onto the church floor. As if that wasn't gruesome enough, Claudia then picks the fetus up off the floor and swallows it, so she can give birth to it herself. Claudia! Oh. <laughs> Whoever wrote this stuff really wasn't concentrating during their school lessons on reproductive biology. It seems to work on this occasion though, as Claudia gobbles up the baby, then blasts a hole in the floor of the church and disappears into it. By the time you follow her down the hole, the god has been born for real this time, and, huge surprise, in true Silent Hill fashion, it's a giant, horrible monster. This is God? They grow up so fast. Just not normally that fast. Catherine is a bizarre psychosexual puzzle game in which you play as Vincent, a man indecisively stuck between his long-term girlfriend Catherine, with a K, and cheating on her with a mysterious attractive stranger named Catherine, with a C. Vincent suffers from vivid nightmares in which he has to scale massive mountains of moving blocks in his underwear. It touches on themes of infidelity and fear of commitment with all the subtlety you'd expect of a video game made in 2011, which is to say that you either commit to your girlfriend or go to hell with a sex demon. You really are sinful, you know. As such, when the game also decided to tackle the topic of childbirth and fear of parenthood, we didn't have high hopes. And yet I don't think any of us were expecting what we got, which was a terrifying monstrous kaiju baby covered in veins, shrieking the word daddy that you have to escape from in your underwear. Stay away from me! What could it mean? You might think, after your first encounter, that you've defeated this infernal infant and its powerful baby shockwaves once and for all. But a few nights later, the kiddo returns, and this time, the themes and symbolism are much deeper and more clever. Because it has a chainsaw. There is no way! I'm not your dad. Thanks to this Evil Dead 2 glow-up, the baby is now able to chainsaw away whole sections of the level that you're supposed to be clambering over, severely limiting your options and making it much harder to make it to the top of the level and to safety from baby. Okay, if I just open this... Any second now. No! He must have his mother's eyes, because I'm pretty sure Vincent's don't have two chainsaw blades sticking out of them. The unblessed infants. Baptism they did not have. The one gate to the true faith was never shown to these newborn souls. 
Limbo shows no mercy for these babes. Back in the Middle Ages, many people believed that unbaptized babies that passed away would go to limbo and be trapped there forever. But then people in the Middle Ages believed a lot of things, like that bees were a kind of weird bird. For real. It seems that some unbaptized babies suffer a worse fate even than an eternity in limbo. They end up immortalized as scrub enemies in the not terribly good 2010 hack and slash game Dante's Inferno. And who remains in limbo? Here suffer those who did not sin, yet did not have the required portal of our faith. Their punishment is the denial of paradise. Paradise in this case would have been, I guess, one of the similar but much better God of War games. This game casts you as 14th century poet turned holy soldier Dante Alighieri as he journeys through the nine circles of hell, none of which, surprisingly, are an electronic store on Black Friday. You're first introduced to the unbaptized baby enemy early in the game when one of them clambers sleepily out of its on-fire, person-shaped cot and toddles towards you. You might have noticed something strange about its hands, though. Instead of a pair of chubby little food grabbers, it has a pair of razor-sharp blades. Oh, it just wants a hug, I think. Deal with the first of these enemies and you'll be instantly attacked by an entire creche's worth of the little tykes, all of whom are having what we believe is known in parenting circles as a massive tantrum. Perhaps they're just overtired. That's a thing, right? As you might expect, from a technical standpoint, fighting a bunch of literal babies isn't terribly difficult. They are the weakest enemies in the game and you can clear an entire room of them in seconds using your oversized scythe, without taking much physical damage. But what about the psychological damage of having to hit a room full of babies with a big knife on a stick? Well, let's leave it to the developers to explain their intentions in their own words. We have enemies that push the limits of taste and kind of be like, Oh, oh, dude, you see that? I want that. I want that moment. I mean, mission accomplished. Congratulations, I guess? I like to think we're pretty good at describing video games here at Outside Xbox. We've made hundreds of videos like this one explaining video games. But even we're struggling to find the words to describe the boss Gegabon from Neo Contra. Just wow. Okay, look, we're professionals and we're going to attempt to make sense of this, so buckle up. Gegabon is a sort of giant mutant baby that lives inside of a squid head, but also has a second, smaller adult face on its forehead. <laughs> how did I do? Not great. Presented with this absolute abomination, we can't help but wonder if the developers of Neo Contra had ever even met a baby. Those small, harmless, generally pretty adorable micro-humans. You know, the ones that don't tend to fire giant killer wasps at you on the regs. That amount of vomiting is entirely accurate though. Let's be honest, Gegabon is a total horror show, all the way up until the point where you gun it down, it disappears down its hole, and you, for some inexplicable reason, dive in after it, like you're some sort of concerned babysitter. What's worse is that Gegabon is the first significant boss you meet in the very first stage of the game. It seems the developers at Konami consider this permanently traumatizing battle as just a mere appetizer for several more mutated bosses ripped straight from a feverish nightmare. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, sort of a crab, okay. but also a hand, human hand, okay, I'm but coming out of a human fa Sorry, I'm really struggling here. Yeah, I'm having trouble too. How's it going with room 302? Well, I uh, just tried to open it up, but it looks like something's... Uh, blacken it from the inside. Silent Hill 4 imagined that a novel experience for a horror game would be to confine your character to his apartment, unable to go outside because of a malevolent force that keeps him trapped indoors. Because it was made before 2020. 
Unlike Lockdown, however, Silent Hill 4 offered its protagonist, Henry Townsend, a way out via a hole that opens up in his bathroom wall, leading to other dimensions. That's the good news. The bad news is that this is a Silent Hill game, and as such, those other dimensions are bad. One such dimension is what is known as the Water Prison, a cylindrical concrete correctional facility that is exactly as horrible as it sounds, and that's before the walls start coming to life and trying to grab you. Even worse than that, though, are the monsters that you first encounter in this area known as the Twin Victims, which are grim, even by Silent Hill's high standards. Silent Hill games have a great track record of horrible child enemies, starting with the knife-wielding kids and ghost babies in the original game, but the Twin Victims are even worse, consisting, as they do, of a pair of conjoined baby heads mounted on top of a set of disturbingly long adult arms that it uses to run around the place and smash you in the face. <laughs> This being Silent Hill, the twin victims have a tragic backstory, being a manifestation of two victims of the main villain, serial killer Walter Sullivan, which makes it all the worse that, if you want to get through this section of the game, chances are you're going to have to batter at least one of these things to death with a pipe. I think I might just stay in the apartment next time. I hear there's a new season of Tiger King. There we go. Hopefully that's put you off parenthood for life and you can spend all the hours of your day instead watching these fine videos that we have made for you to watch. It's much better than babies and look, we're much more adorable. Guaranteed. Look at those. Like these videos with your children? Yes, every one of them and I love them all equally apart from my favourite one. Because everyone's secretly got favourites.